Greetings to you all from Australia. My name is Brady Bartlett and I'm coming to you from the beautiful city of Mianjin on the traditional lands of the Turrbal and Jagara peoples. I'm delighted to be speaking to you today about the latest article I have published in the International Journal of Community Music called The Conceptual Framework for Understanding and Articulating the Social Impact of Community Music. I've got the citation on screen right now and I'm really pleased to say that it's open access so it's free for all to download wherever you are in the world. I'm looking forward to hearing how people react to it, whether it resonates with them, whether they find it of use in their own practice or their research or their teaching and looking forward to seeing how it might become a conversation starter in our field across the world. So to tell you a little bit about this article and the impetus for why I wrote it and some of the ideas that I share in it, I thought I might tell you a little bit about the background to why I even decided to write it in the first place. Uh, for the past 20 years or so, I've had the great pleasure of working with many arts organisations, community organisations, not-for-profits, who are working in a range of really complex settings from remote communities to areas of entrenched disadvantage to prisons to health equity settings, also post-conflict contexts. And in many of these complex contexts, they're looking at the ways in which community music can help bring about positive social outcomes, positive social change, and have a positive social impact in the areas where there's a lot of complexity, there's a lot of need, and there's a lot of challenge. This has been incredible work um, over many years, but the thing that I've found so frequently happening is many programs speak about these huge goals, these huge ambitions when it comes to the social justice or social impact intentions of the work that they're doing, but with very little understanding about the processes that might actually lead to that change. In other words, they make big claims around very big macro systemic changes that they want to make. But so often when they are engaging in the practice and the daily work of community music, they stay quite focused on the individual and interpersonal and community level dynamics. And so I've realized that there's actually a bit of a missing piece in how we understand and conceptualize and think about and articulate the kind of impact that community music can have across a wide range of settings. So what I wanted to do was come up with a framework that might help us to start to converse, to think and to ask, ask questions that allow us to think in this much more multi-dimensional way. And so in the article, what I do is share this framework, which tries to help visualize the many dimensions of change and impact that might be happening in a community music setting. So as you can see there, when we look at it, at the top, we have dimensions of social outcomes. These can range, of course, from the individual where personal transformations are possible to the relational, which is those micro interpersonal dimensions. The outcomes can also range to the meso, what we might call community level transformations. And then they can also flow upstream to the macro level. Now these individual micro, meso, macro level uh, dimensions of change are frequently talked about when we look at social ecological models and say public health or education, arts evaluation, international development. And I think they provide a really useful framework for our field of community music to think from the small to the large. But the really important piece of this framework, of course, is the arrows in between, recognising that this isn't a linear flow from the individual right up to the macro. Oftentimes, these are nested in with one another. So those small micro changes can actually lead to macro changes, and they can also be embedded within community changes. And all of those things can be happening often simultaneously 
in a music program. The other aspect I speak about in this framework is what we call stages of impact. And you can see there in the framework, it recognises that impact and change and positive outcomes in a community music program might happen immediately. Often that's those intrinsic sorts of outcomes, the pleasure, the joy, the captivation that happens in the immediate moment of making music together. But then those stages of impact might also move to a more intermediate level or longer term impact. So for example, you might have a, a program trying to raise awareness about gender-based violence. In the immediate, you might just create that awareness. But when we start moving towards longer term change, we talk about maybe influencing audiences, telling stories that might then shape how policymakers think about the issue and there they might actually make macro level changes to policies, to funding, to resources, to leave provisions, to a range of other things that might have a, a longer term impact on the issue. Then of course we can have degrees of change and this might simply mean stasis, Often we don't talk about that in community music. We, we're so focused on what's the change, what's happening, what's happening in people's lives that's different from um, before because of their participation in this program. Sometimes stasis might actually mean an act of resistance against participating or, 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 or doing something that really asserts self-determination and that can be a really interesting outcome. Other times there might be negative outcomes and these outcomes can happen at the individual to the, the community to the macro level. And I think it's a really interesting thing for us to think about in the community music field in terms of what those negative outcomes might be. So often I think we're in the habit of positive reporting. We feel we need to share the good stories, the things that are going well, but there's a lot to be learned from thinking about what those negative uh, degrees of change could be. But then I've also outlined there that sometimes we have small degrees of change and these can then lead to much more significant outcomes. I think so often when we're talking at that macro level, we can tend to overlook some of the really significant small changes that might actually accumulate, almost like an archipelago where multiple small changes and degrees of you know, thoughts and understanding that might slightly shift around a particular issue. And those small changes that happen in an individual's life or happen in a community life, or maybe change the thoughts of a policymaker in a small way can actually then lead to quite significant changes. But so often when we're talking about all of these things in community music, we're quite imprecise with how we talk about the dimensions of outcomes, how we talk about the stages of impact and how we talk about the degrees of change. And what I'm trying to do in this framework is get us to think about all of these different dimensions, which of course are all shaped very much by the context where community music is happening. It's never happening in isolation and helps us to think about what are we actually trying to change here? Why? and how can we know whether we've actually achieved that change or not? So you've heard me talking about the word impact and impact is a really tricky word for our field to grapple with. There's this huge push internationally to understand the impact of research, the impact of practice. Research funding bodies not only ask for it, but also philanthropic organisations who might be funding a community music program. They want to know what kind of positive impact is this having. Uh, in the article, I talk about the rather problematic idea of impact, because if you think about the actual origins of the word, you're talking about a physical collision, a smashing of something into a stationary object at speed and with force. Now, just listening to those words, those do not resonate with how we try to think about practice in community music and research in community music. The kind of research that I do aims to be slow. It aims to progress over time. It aims to be relational. And it aims to be 
reciprocal where there isn't force um, but it's something that we're doing mutually together and so this concept of impact is really tricky but as I say in the article I'm trying to flip that um, so I'm not only thinking about impact on individuals per se which is quite problematic but I'm thinking about how community music can have an impact on larger systems that might be unfair and unjust and how it can make an intervention on systems rather than people. So that's a different flip um, in terms of how we think about impact, but I think it's something that we do need to grapple with and we do need to problematize. This actually relates to the concept of ethics. And I talk about this in the article as well, because of course, when we're talking about having an impact and we're talking about trying to change communities, there's a really uh, tricky ethical uh, field here that we're having to negotiate. And I think in the past, our field has really had these rather uneasy narratives about this sort of salvationist community musician who comes into a community and provides opportunities for everybody to make music. But there's this sort of hero artist narrative and what we're talking about, where the assumption is that the communities that they might be going in to work with don't have culture, don't have strengths. They're in need of the community musician coming in and, and activating them. And so what I really challenge in this, um, this article is for us to think about this, 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 this mode of impact and this mode of, of, of research and this mode of conceptualizing as working with the strengths that exist within communities to really harness the assets, the creative assets, the cultural strengths of what are already there and worth shining a light on rather than um, community musicians coming in and giving those things and then having a positive impact. So these are some of the, the issues, the thorny questions, the challenges that I raise in the article, all very much based from years and years of practice and research in many diverse contexts where I've seen uh, the need for us to get a lot sharper and a lot more precise about how we describe uh, what we're doing as researchers and as practitioners. So if you'd like to get in touch, my details are on screen, feel free to send me an email. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the article once you've had a chance to read it and to hear how it resonates with you or maybe if there are things that you'd like to explore further with me. I look forward to, I look forward to having a conversation with you. Bye for now.